show your love for Dr. Naida Parson. I'm Dr. Naida Parson, and it is time to celebrate African American history. I have been asked to do a keynote address again this year, and let me start with this question. What in the world happened to the United States as we were together last year? If I were not a fan and a student of black history, I would use the words that we've heard all year, unprecedented, unheard of, never before seen, never would have thought I would have seen the day. But I do know our history, and trust me, there was nothing that you saw this year that has not been seen before. Protests, violence, pandemics, murder, financial devastation, political fighting, backlash, hate groups, civil war, and all of it in concert with history makers, first, celebrations, greatness, rebounds, new leadership, united movements, victories, and triumphs. This is not America, some say. Yes, it is. What history books have you been reading? Some things are a little better. Some things are a little worse. Some things are just the same as they have always been. But our theme this year is the black family, representation, identity, and diversity. Representation, identity, diversity. These concepts took a hit this year, and we have responded with some hits of our own. What many of us found out is that even though African Americans have been accepted as equals more and more in one generation and in some arenas, they were hated more and more in other generations and other arenas. And once certain people were released to say what they have always felt and express what was once kept under wraps, racial conflict came rushing out like a flood. Diversity was under attack. And training the people who we are paying with our tax dollars that diversity should be embraced was eradicated. Representation was under attack, and we had to repeat the same voter fight we fought 60 years ago, and 60 years before that, and 40 years before that. And then there is identity. So many of us who thought we were fitting in and being loved and seen for the content of our character found out in a very rude way that we were still being judged and valued by the color of our skin. Some left their churches, their companies, their agencies, their political parties, heartbroken and disillusioned. Some were even shocked by people who had become family and friends. So my speech today comes to encourage you to have some resolve in the African American community. Maybe get you back on track to your own identity. Maybe help you to celebrate our own diversity. And if you are celebrating this great history, this great people with us, and you are not African American, Remember that you don't have to be one of to stand with. We saw that this year as well. So many stood with our community that were not of our community. I want you to know that we saw you. I want you to know that we love you. The great majority of you understand that you can't love America and hate Americans. That's like loving Popeyes and hating chicken. Now, you can prefer Chick-fil-A over KFC or churches over El Pollo Loco. That's diversity. That's political difference. That's a contrast, a philosophical perspective. But to be in a country that is made up of natives, of immigrants, of refugees, and the kidnapped, and then say only one set of people are Americans is ludicrous. It's untrue, and it's unintelligent. So to the point of the celebration of the identity of black Americans, I actually want to use a little white girl. Her name is Elsa, one of the main characters of the movie Frozen. Elsa was born with something a little different. 
And since it could be dangerous, her family, and this is where the black family fits in, her family realized that since it was potentially dangerous, instead of helping her control it and use it and develop it and present it to mankind, refined and productively expressive, they told her to hide it. She did all she could to hide it away. But it kept sneaking out until one day when people saw what was in her and rejected her that one last time, she had had enough. What was in her was too great. It was who she was. So she said, let it go. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. It's funny how some distance makes everything seem small and the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all. It's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break through. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I'm free. Let it go. Let it go. I am one with the wind and sky. Let it go. Let it go. You'll never see me cry. Here I stand and here I stay. Let the storm rage on because the cold never bothered me anyway. Let it go. Let it go. I'll rise like the break of dawn. Let it go. Let it go. That perfect girl is gone. Here I stand in the light of day. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. Well, black America, there has always been a gift in you. Yes, you were different, more passionate, more creative, more expressive, loud sometimes, always recreating language and style, music and art, science and mechanics, work and play. You have the gift of gab and rhythm, and sometimes you're extreme. You get bored with the mundane, so you put vocal calisthenics all up in the national anthem. You rehearse a whole dance routine just in case you make a touchdown, and you come up with new things to do with nappy hair every year. And, and don't go to church with us. Don't go to church with us. You're going to hear glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. He's all right. I tell you, we can put on a performance in a storefront church on Sunday that is more exciting than the Grammys and the Oscars put together. I tell you what, the African American deacons boards would have had those votes counted. And nobody would have gotten into the Capitol past a black Baptist usher board. You can believe that. We are too much sometimes. But we are not wild. We are just passionate, powerful, and creative, and entertaining as heck. America and the world has always loved watching us do our thing. But we, so we wrapped it up in one word. We called it soul. Oh, we called it groove, or we called it cool. We called it black girl magic or black male swag. But in America, our passion was dangerous. We didn't fit in. It could get people killed. So we hid it. We've been wearing masks. We tried to fit in. We tried assimilation and integration and self-degradation. We argued about it. We were just trying to survive. We were trying to find a way. Crispus Attic said, let's fight for America. Marcus Garvey said, let's go back to Africa. It seems to me, said Booker T. I disagree, said W.E.B. Martin said, love them. Malcolm said, love us. The NAACP said, take them to court. The Black Panther said, take back the streets. Colin said, take a knee. Stacy said, take the Senate. We've done it all. Our hair, we fried, we died, and we laid to the side, trying to hold the blackness back. We suppressed our language and learned how to articulate proper English. We got quieter in church, more conservative at work, didn't bring all that ghetto into our new neighborhoods. We got the education, worked hard, made millions for other people, and made a lot of millions for ourselves. We invented, we made this place better in every generation. And even when some of us were left behind, when the passion turned into anger and addiction and crime and broken families, we pushed for the redemption of our brothers and sisters 
sisters. We took our gifts back to the communities that we came from. And still, we found out that for many in America, all of our efforts were in vain, still disenfranchised, unappreciated, uncelebrated, threatened, even when elected by some, viciously disrespected by others. So who are we now, black family? What do we tell this next generation about representation, identity, and diversity? I say, if there are some people who don't love us by now, we may as well be ourselves. Because those who matter don't mind. And those who mind don't matter. The truth is, the black never bothered me anyway. I know how to say, hello, how are you? But what's up? Never bothered me anyway. I have had relaxers, jerry curls, wigs, and weaves. But natural hair? Never bothered me anyway. I've worn smoothers, girdles, and spanks. But thick hips and a big ghetto behind never bothered me anyway. I've led my congregation in quiet, intimate worship. I enjoyed it, but not to make anybody accept me, because the passionate praise and a holy dance never bothered me anyway. I have some black and blue and gray suits, but red and gold and orange and lime green and purple never bothered me anyway. I appreciate dry intellect and linear thinking, but not so you can think I'm smart because passion and creativity and lively expression never bothered me anyway. So black family, here's what I suggest. You tell your African-American children after a year like this, let it go, let it go. Can't hold you back anymore. Let it go, let it go. We're still coming through the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the soul rage on. The black never bothered me anyway. It's funny how a year like this makes everything seem small and the fears that once controlled us can't get to us at all. It's time to see what all else we can do to test the limits and break through. No self-hatred, no black water down, no bowing low for me, I'm free. So let it go, let it go. Trying for a hater's approval, I don't know why. Let it go, let it go. This is our new cry. Here I stand and here I stay. Let the groove on, uh, rage on because the black never bothered me anyway. Let it go, let it go. We'll always rise like the break of dawn. Let it go, let it go. That quiet Negro is gone. So here I stand in the light of day. Let the passion raise on, because the black never bothered me anyway. <laughs>